Hey everyone, my name is Root, and we're here. This is going to be week number three of the ICBA, and we're up against CJ Beasley and his Philadelphia Fiones. Now, this is a super interesting matchup. Um, I know I say that every week, but uh, I really built something I thought was different in this matchup, and I really like how I think it's going to interact with his team. Um, his main offensive threats, uh, I do have defensive checks for, but uh, it's going to be a, a difficult to break down his defensive checks. But we do see the Victini, Darkrai, Galvantula, Mega Agron, Florgis, and uh, Milotic. So I'm pretty positive those are the exact six that I expected him to bring. Um, I was talking it over with Randy HLD, and he thought... Uh, and his top five was pretty obvious, but that Galvantula slot was a little bit of a wild card. I thought it was his best play against me, and he does, in fact, bring it. So, I honestly just kind of want to lead off with my Infernape. My Infernape is honestly a little bit expendable, I think. If there's any Mon that is expendable on my team, it would be the Infernape, and I kind of just want to lead off with it. Um, I can get a U-turn off. Uh, I am Scarfed, so I should outspeed his entire team, barring any Scarfs of his own. Um... He could set up webs. Uh, I don't think webs are going to be that valuable to him. Uh, only because... Um, I don't run any speed on my Mammoth Swine or my Lele. Um, my Thunderous is going to be immune to it. And uh, my Infernape is going to be the biggest thing that's going to be affected by the webs. My other two mons are my defensive mons. So I don't really... Um, I'm not really too concerned about the webs in this matchup, but they will be a nuisance for my Infernape. That's kind of why it is a little bit expendable, and because um, it doesn't really have the most fantastic matchup. It is there to kind of deal damage, to kind of... Um, uh, it can do a lot of things in this match, but I don't think it's going to be something that I can rely on to really be the breaker for this match. Uh, it does lead off with my Lodic, so that is very, very interesting. Um... I do wish that I, I mean, like, even a, even a Scarfed Toxic here would have been fantastic, but I am adamant. I wonder, I wonder if I can potentially uh, do something, if I can go for a close combat before it, make it, before the Flame War pops. Let me see here. My Lodic, a physically defensive My Lodic. Before the Flame War pops... Uh, I still do under half, and then after Flame War pops, I do absolutely nothing to this man. Okay. You're probably expecting me to lead off Mammoth Swine, if I'm being honest. Um, I think I can just click U-turn here. I think I can just click U-turn, because I don't want to play, you know, frivolously with this thing. Um, I might just want to U-turn into my Lele here, I think. There's the U-turn. We do a clean 20%-ish? We do a very clean 20%, which means that it's not max defense. Because theoretically, U-turn should max out at 18.8%, 18 so 19%. So maybe, okay, maybe it is. Maybe I just got, like, the absolute top roll on this one. But I think I'm fine to just go into Lele here. I think I'm okay to just go into Lele here. Um... I do have a Psychium Z Lele, which I'm pretty excited about. So, this is a really fun interaction that I think I have here. Um, my Lele has Psy Shock to kind of try to hit the Florges and Psychium Z. So, I can Psychium Z against this thing, or I can um, Psy Shock against the Florges. And honestly, I kind of want to pop the, the Z move, even though I think he would want to switch into the Aggron. Well, if I really think that he's going to switch into the Aggron, I would click. Um, I would click Focus Blast. Maybe I just click Moonblast here. Moonblast is a safer play. I didn't take a screenshot. I'm going to do that right now for, on the bottom screen. Okay. Um, it's probably too early to pop the Psyche MZ here. It's probably too early. To just pop the Psychic MZ. He, he could just go into Florges. He doesn't know that I have Psy Shock yet. He doesn't know that I have Psy Shock yet. So actually, I probably can just click Psy Shock. Although the Dark probably could come in. I'm going to just click Moonblast here. I think if he does go into the Florges, then Moonblast into Psy Shock, boosted by the terrain, should be able to get, put me in an okay position. Um, I think that's ultimately going to be a 
better play than anything else that I could do. He is thinking about his play quite a bit because um, he's still thinking about it. Um, which leads me to think... Leads me to think... I wonder if he thinks that I have Focus Blast because, I mean, I do have Focus Blast, but um, I don't think... I think the fact that he's thinking about it means that I don't think I'm ever going to take him by surprise with my Focus Blast. Does go into the Victini. So, I want to gauge a lot off of this damage. I do almost exactly... Oh, that's 25% on a crit. I do almost exactly 25% on a crit to a Victini. So, to a Noble Victini, Moonblast is 25% minimum. So, this thing has to be at least max HP. Which means that... I don't think anything he has... He, he could have a Scarf Gal Galvantula. I think Scarf Darkrai is unlikely to me. But I don't know. I could be completely wrong about that. Um, But let me see here. Uh, Tapu Lele. With a crit. Could this thing be Assault Vested? So, with a crit Moonblast, I should be doing... A lot more damage. I should I should have done a lot more damage. I, this thing's assault vested. This thing is assault vested, which is bananas to me. But I think that's definitely fine. I think for sure I want to go into my Umbreon only because I want to really try to figure out whether or not this thing is physical or special. Um, I think. I was telling Randy that I think um, Special would be a much better brain form in this matchup, but um, I could absolutely see a physical set coming through just because um, v Creed does do so much. But the fact that this thing is pot is potentially Assault Vested, because again, that was a crit that did 25% and goes for a Charge Beam. That is super interesting. That is super interesting. Doesn't get any type of boost, but I don't think it does even enough to... Uh, Okay, so I guess we have to see if we give this thing absolutely no special attack and we give this charge beam. If we give this thing charge beam, then yeah, that's almost exactly right. 9, nine to 11% for absolutely no attack. So I'm almost positive this thing has to be, um, this thing has to be assault vested. And I think he's going to want to switch out. He could expect me to toxic going to the aggro on here. And I, and I don't really have a fantastic play to that, other than kicking, clicking foul play, I guess. But I don't think he wants anything on his team to get toxic here. He could go into the Galvantula here. Um, that could allow me to Baton Pass. I think I do want a Baton Pass. Only because I think whether he brings in the Aggron or the... Goes for the U-turn, that's fine. That's totally fine. Again, this is not invested. I don't think I should be too, too worried about how much damage that's doing, even though it is super effective. I think I'm going to get that back through Wish eventually. And uh, whatever he switches into, I will be able to click a uh, baton pass here and get a little bit of momentum going here um but yeah i would have never expected assault vested victini i think i might have brought that up at some point in a uh, building but again it's not anything that i would have i thought he had a, a couple be a few better sets here to bring okay he is thinking about this quite a bit i don't think he has the best switches into a good um, foul play. I could also be clicking Toxic here, so I don't think he wants anything to really get Toxic. It could kind of force his hand into going into the Aggron here, which would be really interesting for me, I think. Um, if he does go into the Aggron... Huh, what is my best play if he does go into the Aggron here? Um, probably just the Infernape. Yeah, the Infernape just to get some damage going here. I, I'm gonna guess that's the Aggron. No, it's a Darkrai. That's super interesting. Well, I guess we will get to see uh, what kind of a dark cry this is. However, if I go into Infernape and I put in a dark cry, uh, I mean, close combat should just about do it. But Flare Blitz needs a little bit more damage, and U Turn doesn't quite do it. So, um, I could try to make him think. Have I used anything but Moonblast? Have I used anything but Moonblast? I have not. I could make him think that I have a that I have a scarfed Tapu Lele. 
But I don't think that's a good play. I don't think that's ever the best play here. I think... I think I let him... See, because I really do want to go into my Thunderous, but I don't want to let him know quite yet that my Thunderous is Scarfed. So, I'm gonna... You could know that I want to U-turn and, and... And stay in here. But if he does, then I have counterplays, I think. Um... I think I can click U-turn here. I think I'm okay to click U-turn here. I have things that I can U-turn into. I think I'll be okay. But I'm still kind of reeling over that charge beam Big Teeny. So he was really thinking about the Alamomola matchup, I think. But uh, I think he left himself a little bit weak to the Umbreon matchup, unfortunately. So I don't quite know where that kind of leaves him here because i think umbreon's always going to be able to get a, up, up a wish his best move to hit me is the um his best move to hit me would be the u-turn but like i said i could always wish up on that so i'm or i could oh yeah i could always wish up on that that's what i meant to say uh just going to this thing that is pretty much expected but i do need just a little bit more damage to really ensure a KO onto this with Thunderbolt. But I'm curious if bringing in... Could I bring in my Thunderous and scare this thing out? Because I really just want to click U-turn again. Oof. Oh, it's so close. It's right on the cusp. It's right on the cusp. If this thing is max defense... I was, I was kind of running these calcs earlier. So this is a physical... This is a physical Thunderous, Lonely Nature, with Thunderbolt, just for this matchup. But uh, but it's Wild Charge U-Turn, Wild Charge U-Turn, a knockoff, and... and, uh... Thunderbolt. My Lodic. Thunderbolt's right on the cusp, but he doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. If last interaction was any indication, he's going to go into Victini, and I think I just click U knock off here. I think he goes into Victini again, and I click knock off. Because, yeah, it, because, yeah, because by every indication, I should be fully, um, goes into, uh, all right. So, I made a not great play, but I think I'll be okay in this interaction. I think I can be okay here. I will have to switch out, I think. But, uh, we do knock off the leftovers. I have to maintain my answers to this. I don't want to go directly into... my... Umbreon. But yeah, I straight up don't have the best answers to this. I could go into Infernape. Infernape could just burn itself out to Flare Blitz, but at that point, I mean, what am I going to do, right? It was always going to burn itself to, out to Flare Blitz eventually. And even if he does want to bring in the Victini, the Victini's Assault Vested, so I'll be doing decent damage there. And I think I already have a little bit of chip on it. I don't quite remember exactly how much damage I have on that, but I think I will be able to go into my... I, I, I really do want to just stick to my original game plan of just trying to... Um, maintain my checks and trying to, uh, do the damage that I know that I need to do. Okay. I think I have the checks for his team, but this floor just is the biggest, is the closest thing he has to, um, a real wild card here. Because, I think I always kind of struggle against the floor just a little bit. So, I'm gonna have to play my answers to floor just well. Um, I still do have Psyshock on Lele. I have the Mammoth Swan, which is going to do massive, massive damage to it with Earth Glee and Adamant Max Attack. Um, but I do want to keep it reasonably healthy to try to be able to play out this matchup a little bit. And I do have um, 
I do have this thing, which ideally can get off some major damage, but um, I guess I'm just gonna have to see. I'm just gonna have to see. I collect Flare Blitz, um, which I probably shouldn't have because now this very freely allows in his Milotic, but um, he could try to be protect. He could be trying to guard against a potential U-turn play because U-turn would allow my Thunderous back in if he does try to go into the floor just here, or not the floor, into the Milotic here. Does withdraw, and something's gonna get Flare Blitz, and I believe that's the Victini. Yeah, it's just it's just enough uh, an okay amount. But Flare Blitz could be a 2-hit KO. Oof, that is right on the cusp. And, yeah, no. No, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I don't think he ever clicks Psychic because of my Umbreon in the back. I think he clicks U-Turn, if I'm being honest. I think he expects my Umbreon to come in now. I think he expects my Umbreon to come in now. Which really makes me want to stay in and click Flare Blades, honestly. I think I'm going to do that. It could. This could be an, an aggressively bad play, but I don't... After I, after I so aggressively went into my Umbreon now, and he knows how specially defensive I am, I don't think he makes that play again. He just attacks me. He stays in. Alright, I made a bad play. I made a really bad play. But, uh, okay. Does, does click U-turn, okay. So, okay, I do maintain a little bit of chip damage on, on this thing. And this will allow the Milotic to come in, and it will give the Milotic a very free recover. But, ultimately, Milotic could also come in and click Scald. I think my Lodic would want to protect against my Thunderous coming in, but if my Lodic comes in and, and clicks Recover, then it always gives me... Then that always gives me my Thunderous coming in, which he might not care about, but kind of should. I don't know. Um, What can I do in this situation? What do I do in this situation? I think I just have to go into my Thunderous. Well, my Thunderous is such a win con that I feel really protective of it right now. Um, I think I go into it, though. I don't think he can afford not to recover. Because if he scalds and, and lets my Thunderous come in for absolutely free, then uh, that would be pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. He was. I think he was always forced to, to make that play. He could try to Scald, but I am, I think, close to max HP, honestly. I have 228 HP. And does he have a Scarfer? His Scarfer could be Galvantula, but I think his Galvantula would have made an appearance by now. If nothing, if for no other reason than to just Volt Switch around. But I guess I have Mammoth Swine, so maybe he doesn't want to take those kinds of risks until the Mammoth Swine goes down. But I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. He saw me click Knock Off before, and I don't know if he was really calculating out that damage. But... If I do click Thunderbolt, if I do click Thunderbolt, I think I click Thunderbolt. Man, part of me is really telling me that he stays in here. He could just go into the floor just again as just a blanket kind of check. And if he does that, I think I click Wild Charge here. How much is Wild Charge? Okay, I'm going to click Wild Charge here. Does withdraw. Do we see the floor just? I don't know what that is. Is that the Aggron? It is the Aggron. Okay. That does a decent amount of damage. Uh, I think I think he would want to prioritize rocks quite a bit. And I think if he, if he does that, it allows in my Mammoth Swine, potentially. Does that allow in my Mammoth Swine? Agron. A fully defensive Mega Agron. But okay, so I, I'd, I'd be surprised if he doesn't bring Max Special Defense Agron just for my Lele. But 
But yeah, if I had clicked Thunderbolt, I think that would have been ultimately the better play. I really think he prioritizes rocks here because of how much I have been switching around and just not allowing my thunders back in and out as often as it has been doing. But hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He could have clicked rock slide for all I know. Goes for a toxic here. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. So if this thing is max special defense. No, Earthquake's still not a KO, but... He doesn't have anything off the ground, so Earthquake is pretty free. Earthquake is pretty free. I don't think he wants to give this thing up quite yet. It is still technically his best Lele check, I think. So... Uh, I don't think he would want to give this thing up too quickly. Although... Honestly, my Lodic might be a really good switch in here, but my Lodic... My Lodic... Yeah, my Lodic is not going to take much of anything from this. Not a burned one. Doesn't have anywhere near enough um, damage onto it already. But I think, I think that preventing rocks from coming up in that interaction is... Oh, that is very close. If I had my own rocks up, that would have actually done it. I think I have to get my own rocks up. Even if I let this thing go down, I think this thing is forced to recover. This thing has to recover. I think I might just get up my own rocks up. I think rocks up for me is going to be pretty huge. I did put a few points of, of uh, speed into this thing so that I would be able to outspeed in this interaction. Yeah, he was absolutely forced to recover. And now he can click Scald, but now I can switch something in. Potentially... I think the best switching would be the Umbreon because I can wish Baton Pass in that, in that interaction. But Earthquake did a lot of damage. That is a max attack Adamant Mammoth Swine with with Earthplate. Earthplate was a Randy HLD uh, suggestion. But yeah, it was so huge to prevent rocks from coming up against that Mega Aggron, which also I think should lead me to believe that, that Mega Aggron that Mega Aggron is really specially defensive because otherwise I think you would want to stay in and get rocks up against me or something to that effect. Yeah, I, I was, I was going to say, I'd prefer he burned me to not uh, potentially get toxic, but yeah, this is the quickest wish of my Pokemon career. It's going to nullify my leftovers, but ultimately, between Wish and most other things I can do, I think I think I'll be okay here. I I could have looked toxic. You could try to bring something in here. Or no, I think I think preventing against the Aggron switching in might be the better play. So maybe I click Baton Pass because he has no business wanting to stay in here when I could Wish. This is an interaction that could that could go to timer in all honesty. But I think I think I click Baton Pass here. I think I do it. I'm going to do it. Regardless, Baton Pass is going to allow me to switch out after. If he does stay in and click Scald, then Baton Pass would allow me to switch out after he makes a move. So yeah, okay. It does go into the Dark Cry. But this is going to allow my Infernape to come in. But Thunderous might be a better play. Thunderous might be such a better play. Thunderous potentially wins now. I'm going to go into Thunderous. Actually, does... Would Thunderous KO... Could it put Thunderous potentially KO with a U-turn? No, not quite. Okay. Yeah, I think... I think I threaten it out... Mm. I think I go into, I think I go into Infernape. Unfortunately, Infernape is the better play in this situation. Part of me thinks I click close combat. 
Part of me thinks I, cl I click close combat. That's really hard to say, actually. Um... I think I have to do it. Or I could just click U-turn here. I think U-turn is a pretty no drawback play. It's a much safer play, but it is super obvious. I think I'm going to get to the point eventually where he's going to be able to know that, that I'm going to come in just to click U-turn. The thing is, Thunderous could win if I didn't have to take so much darn recoil from the Wild Charge here. I'm pretty sure Thunderous can KO this Darkrai. Actually, can it? Does does Thunderous KO with Wild Charge? It does not. Okay, so I do genuinely need to still chip down this Darkrai, but I think I'll be okay on that front. I think I'll end up being okay on that front. And after that chip, now Wall Charge is incredibly free against this Milotic. Wall Charge is literally free against this Milotic. Because from this range, Wall Charge KOs. Actually, no. I don't think... I think the earlier Calc didn't account for the burn, or did it? No, it did not. Although, Thunderbolt is free. Thunderbolt is free. Which honestly probably means that I should click U-turn again. Honestly probably means that I should click U-turn again. Does it though? I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna click U-turn. I think this thing is too low to risk a Thunderbolt here. Even though I haven't even revealed Thunderbolt. I've only revealed Wall Charge. So he doesn't know that I have Thunderbolt yet. So maybe this was a bad play. Does he know that I have... Have I clicked Thunderbolt? No, I haven't. I really haven't. So he could stay in and click recover here, which would be pretty bad for me, actually. Um. Oh yeah, I don't think there's any way around it. I think I should have clicked Thunderbolt in this situation. Even if he does go into the into the uh, floor just like he did last time, I think I always had the better play with Thunderbolt. Because if he goes into floor just, floor just gets worn down over time. Well, floor just can still wish up and do all types of stuff that I don't want it to do, but does withdraw. I did click U-turn, right? Um, when it comes back in, it's going to still take a good, decent amount of chip damage, and I and I still don't think that Thunderous has had to reveal Scarf yet, actually. That's a lot of damage, actually. That was, what, about almost 50%? I just want to know if I just want to know if Infernape U-Turn would KO as well. Yeah, that's completely no bulk. Which means that U-Turn from an Infernape would almost always take this thing out. And I think almost half an hour into this match, we will we potentially get our first KO here. Or I think I'm going to put myself in, a, in the best position possible to get a first KO here really soon. Um, him not getting rocks up could honestly be huge because I would not be able to do all this if he did get that up, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. If I do win, it will be because I got rocks up before he did. I think that is very clear at this point. But also the team that he brought doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of answers to a Thunderous, to a mixed Thunderous like the one that I brought. And I think... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think he I think he has to let this thing go down. I, Victini is going to get chipped down very much over time. Uh, Darkrai... Darkrai can't take... Darkrai cannot take this U-turn into a Thunderous U-turn. Agron would leave him weak to getting hit by something else. Florges, um, would allow in the Mammoth Swine. And, uh, Milotic is going to get Thunderbolted. So, I don't know. Does withdraw. That's very interesting. I don't think that, I, I don't think it can come back in on rocks, though. I don't think. Let's go into the Agron. 
Let's go into the Aggron. So it did risk me just straight up going for a Flare Blitz in that situation. So maybe that was a little bit of a play there. Um, I do get the crit, but um, it's going to let in the Mammoth Swine, which I know Mammoth Swine is not really the best uh, in this interaction, in case, just in case he is like max defense. I think he does take this hit com reasonably comfortably, but being able to... Being able to open the door for other members of my team, I think, is going to be pretty decent for me. I think, I think honestly, if I did click Flare Blitz, I think that would have been better for me, honestly, which is pretty unfortunate, I think. Yeah, two Flare Blitzes should have taken this thing out. Well, that's assuming it's max special defense. If we did give this thing max defense, then yeah, two Flare Blitzes still would have done it. But uh, now we just have to hope that this thing is not max defense. And if it's really specially defensive, then I potentially take this thing down. Actually, no, this thing actually probably takes a hit no matter what I do. So, I think he's going to get up his rocks, and this is going to be where a lot of my fun ends. I really should have been more aggressive in Click Flare Blitz. I really should have been more aggressive in Click Flare Blitz. I think that... But that, that would leave me open to him going into my Lodic, and... I don't know... We take it out. Oh my god, rocks never come up in this match. Okay, so for sure that thing was... That thing had to have not even been at max HP. Or I got, like, a, an, a remarkably high roll. I'm gonna have to ask him after the match what the heck happened there. But I, I don't think this thing... I think this thing could not have even been max HP. If that took it out. Because just max HP I think does max 55% which I think was exactly where he was so I could have gotten the most insane of high rolls but after that thing going down I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to keep this thing in a decent amount of HP for the floor juice but um ultimately I like the positioning here if I can maintain it and that's going to be a huge if but I think I'm just, I think I have what it takes to kind of do that here. I think I have what it takes to kind of do that here. The Darkrai does come in. Now, this is going to be the, yeah, this is going to be the Darkrai's first chance to just, like, get an unmitigated hit against me. And, like I said, I do really need this thing against the Florges. Thunderous could potentially take out the Florges. But this would be the best way to take out the Florges. And I don't think I ever do, I don't think I ever do 75% just with Ice Shard. So I think, I think I can reasonably switch out into, I think I can reasonably switch out into Lele here. I think I can reasonably switch out into Lele here. Or, let me see, how much damage is a Darkrai doing to me? Dark Cry. Just a max attack timid special attacker with dark poles. Dark Pulse does under half, but Lele is weakened enough where that doesn't matter. He could set up a nasty plot, but I don't think that matters in because it always allows my Thunderous to come in and and, and counter. I think I go into Infernape because I feel like Infernape is the best candidate to kinda of take a hit here. Yeah, Infernape should almost always take a hit here. I'm going to go into Infernape. And I think now maybe I try to be a little bit more aggressive and go for... Goes for a sub. Okay. That's very, very interesting. That's very, very interesting. I mean, that, that allows me to click U-turn, but do I click U-turn? Do I click U-turn? Actually, would would Ice Shard have prevented a sub? Would Ice Shard have pre prevented a sub? It would not. Okay, so that's fair enough. I think... Yeah, I just clicked Flare Blitz twice. I think even if this thing wants to hit me, I should take a hit and Flare Blitz recoil twice. And I think that should counter this thing. If he sets up if he sets up a nasty plot, then I still outspeed this thing and I still take this thing out. 
Um, and yeah, I, I for sure take a Dark Pulse. If he has Psychic, yeah, Psychic, and I lose this interaction anyway. But... What was I ever going to do about that? The, 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 the most important thing is that I break the sub, and my Thunderous comes in for absolutely free. And at that point, my Thunderous can start to Wild Charge for very, I think, pretty much freely. Um, especially now that the Milotic is so chipped down that my Milotic um, doesn't take two Wild Charges anymore. So my Milotic can't be a switch in, necessarily. But I don't think he ever clicks Nasty Plot. He does click Nasty Plot. I don't know. I don't know. But this allows in the Milotic. He can't let this thing go down, I don't think. Flare Blitz always KOs Darkrai. Does he let this thing go down? If the... If the... I should have clicked Close Combat. If he goes into my Lodic... If he goes into my Lodic, then it has to take Rocks and Burn. And it should be right around 50%. But Flare Bliss isn't doing enough. Flare Bliss doesn't do enough. I don't want to... I don't want to get rid of all of this progress that I have been doing on... The... My Lodic. I think, I think the safer play... Is to go into... Is to go into Lele. Because I think he has to switch out, and if he doesn't care about the Dark Cry and he just attacks here, then I think Lele, giving up Lele is my best play possible here. But what I can't do is let this thing go into my Lodic, which I think he's trying to do right now. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, this was absolutely necessary for me to do. Absolutely necessary for me to do. And that actually looks like it's right on the cusp of being a 2 KO. So maybe two Flare Blisses would have done it in this situation, but I don't think I was ever in a position of, Oh, no, 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 no. That didn't... Again, it doesn't account for Burn. Yeah, no, after... After the... After the Marvel scale, that's never, never a KO. So I can click Moonblast here. Moonblast should be relatively free for on everything against the... Except the Victini. But if the Victini comes in, it's going to take... A lot of damage, and even though it's assault vested, um, I can deal with it. Even though it's assault vested, I can deal with it. Now, would Psy Shock do this? In I think Psy Shock could do this. Um, what is this thing called? Victini. Assault Vest Victini. Uh, I think this thing is max HP, at least. Psyshock in terrain does, should do minimum 27% if this thing is just max uh, HP. And that should just about do it. I can click Psyshock here. Goes, goes for the U-turn, so... I don't know. Could be going into the Darkrai. But I don't think I mind the Darkrai coming in. I don't think I mind the Darkrai coming in. Could be going into Florges, actually. You probably expect me to be switching out. Me oh, he expected my Umbreon to be coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that checks out. That checks out. I get it now. Um. Goes into the Florges, but this is going to be a terrain boosted Psy Shock after Rocks. And I hope we do enough damage here. Oof, that is a straight KO. That is a straight KO. I very, very much needed that. Now that my Lodi should go down, I don't even think the Galvantula can come into rocks anymore. Um, Victini isn't strong enough to hit me hard enough. I think he has to go into Darkrai. Take me out, which allows my... Which allows my... Oh, brings in the Galvantula. Okay, okay. Is he going to try to set up webs? Question mark? Because um, I don't mind webs, I don't think. 
I think Thunderous still wins even with webs. It takes out, I take out the Darkrai. I take out um the Milotic. Victini for sure. Actually, Victini doesn't come in on rocks, I don't think. Victini might. It it might uh come in on like 1% on rocks. But if he clicks webs, I just click Psyshock. I don't think... Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Thunderous doesn't care. Thunderous doesn't care, and Thunderous is Scarf. He, he, he might think that, that Infernape is my only Scarfer, so I think that's the only reason he makes this play. But, uh... He might try to... He might be trying to set up his... His... His Darkrai, but... He has to attack me, right? I, I have to click Moonblast, because now that I know that he's sub-nasty plot... Now that I know that he's sub-nasty plot... Um, okay, now that I know, now that I know that he's sub-nasty plot, um, I can't give this thing any turns, let's go for the blue flare, we do take it, I was gonna say, I, I really hope we're, we're specially defensive enough to take that, um, but we are just pretty much like max HP, we, we don't have any, like, real bulk, so Laylee's gonna get a third KO, but I think it's gonna for sure go down to the dark Darkrai right now. And I don't think I'm a, or or okay no never mind. The weirdness does go away. And did he click blue flare expecting something to come in? Do I have anything that's weak to, that's super weak to blue flare? I don't know. He couldn't U turn so actually um, Umbreon would have been relatively free because he can't switch into U turn anymore. Um, I guess the only real question now is, okay so I made a mistake right? Uh, Randy was telling me that I should have packed Mock Punch as my last move instead of Endeavor on my Infernape for this type of situation, and uh, I agreed with him. I, I knew that he was right. I agreed with him. I was going to do it, and then I forgot to do it. So, um, Infernape could, could have still potentially won this match. Well, no, because of the... You, you guys get it, because of the um, Milotic. But, uh, I think two Moonblast should do it, right? Because Lele is still faster than the Milotic. And... Lele is still faster than the Milotic. And... Uh, Darkrai... Can't sub up forever. Well, Lele can't survive after this turn because of the burn. So he will go into this thing. He could try to be setting up a sub, but I... It wouldn't make sense to, I don't think. Would it even be worth per trying to preserve any type of 6-0 here? Because now, we need, cause now he's in a position... Actually, yeah, Ice Shard here can, can, can potentially um, win the match now. Um, the only... Truly, a uh, bad scenario here would be if he sets up a sub right now. But he ha he's in no position to try to set up a sub right now. I can always break a sub. Uh, there's the webs. Does hit the Dark Pulse. And it's Life Orb, so it's... So this thing is never going to be able to truly break my team. And if he does set up a sub, then he goes down to his own Life Orb. So I click Baton Pass. Maybe he has Focus Blast, but... I have no idea why I'm trying to preserve six out. Um... But, yeah, he can't set up a sub, because then his next attack does go for the Focus Blast, does connect the Focus Blast, so, uh, a 6 was never going to happen, no matter what, um, because he did connect the Focus Blast, but this will allow, well, for, well so first of all, this, this gives my, uh, the only thing that I have to make sure is do two Thunderbolts win this match. Darkrai, Uber Special Attacker. At level 50. Yeah, Thunderbolts. Two Thunderbolts should do this. 
So the only thing that, that that interaction really did was give Tapu Lele three KOs without without being KO'd, KO'd itself. So I don't know. It's gonna I, it's gonna I, for a second I thought I was I was gonna be able to preserve a six O, but um, I guess the only thing it really did was look better on the stat sheet. So two Thunderbolts should end this match. I don't think there's any chance of this match going to timer either. So at this point I could just click two Thunderbolts and I believe come home with a win here. Uh, that was a pretty wild match. Again, uh, it was not being able to set up Stealth Rocks in this match that I think really, uh, gave me the advantage here. But regardless, regardless, um, I think even if he had waited that long into the match to set up the rocks, um, it was like around the middle of the match. If he, him waiting that long, I think already it had kind of done the damage. It, it it allowed me to get all what I needed to do, especially after he let me set up rocks. Um, he was never really in that position to be able to uh, take me on, I don't think. But uh, I think that's gonna be the match. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really really soon. Uh, this match was way way longer than I expected it to be, but we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the ICBA with uh the last few weeks of the ap academy and uh the final couple weeks of the mpl as well uh and hopefully playoffs in either of those i think we're in decent position we could uh make a run into that but the ubl will be coming up really really soon and potentially the pgbl as well so stay tuned for that as well but with that thank you guys so much for watching again and i hope you once again out